Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I like to build a plug, plug like this. Okay, this one's gonna be three eighths. Um, not, I haven't decided if I wanna build a three eighths or a half inch yet. This plug's ready for a lid. It's ready for the hook hangers. So stay tuned guys, and I'll show you guys how to build one. What I like to do is start out with a piece of balsa wood. This is a piece of half inch balsa wood. I have a template here that I made. I drew up this bait and I made it. And I just use this for my template piece. So all I'm gonna do with this, is I'm gonna set it up here. I'm gonna take a marker. I wouldn't suggest marker, but this is all I have right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this outline of this. Just like so. Okay, now that that's traced, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and get our plug cut out. So let's go ahead and get that cut. And um, yeah. All right guys, so I got my plug cut out here. And um, like I said, this half inch plug and all I used was my band saw. Um, now if you want, you can use a scroll saw. I just preferred to use this first. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'll sand this a little bit and uh, we'll profile this bait. So when it comes to sanding my baits, um, I like to use this. All this is, is like a foam um, pad with sandpaper on it. And I just take it. And all I'm trying to do is kind of shape the bait how we want it. This will kind of give us our rough look. And we'll kind of smooth out any, any hard lines or any hard edges you get. Okay, go ahead and smooth the corners. Go ahead and hit that just like so. And now we have a plug here that's ready to be rounded. Um, now if you want, you can take your marker and you can lay it flat and mark and then flip it and mark. But what I prefer to do is put this on a router and uh, I router these with a quarter inch bit. I wouldn't suggest it um, if you're not good with a router or anything. These guys can grab and they can just throw, get your fingers caught or anything. So I wouldn't suggest doing it that way if you're a beginner um, but we're gonna go ahead and do that now alrighty so this is the router I'm gonna be using this is just a cheap router I bought off of Amazon I think I paid $80 for it and it came with this bit this is a quarter inch bit whenever you're routing make sure <clears throat> your bit is half the thickness of your bait because if your bit is not half the thickness of your bait you're gonna cut way too far into this side and that's going to cause an uneven profile on the top of this bait. Um, so let's go ahead and route this and I'll show you guys what I mean. I like to start at the tail end and work my way up and then I'll flip it. Okay. And I'll start here and you'll see. So you can see when we routered that, we have a really nice routered bait now. And you can see these points come together perfectly. And this only rounded over half of that bait. You see where that halfway mark is? Now when we flip this, you wanna be very careful to not push too far in. Because if you push too far in, as you can see, this doesn't have a super hard line to ride. This top piece here is gonna be riding on this edge. So make sure you don't push too hard in or you'll cut way too deep into your bait. guys so now that I got both of them routed you can see we got the rounded profile of our bait here now okay and as you can see I kind of pushed a little too, too far in here and I don't know if you guys seen but whenever I went here you kind of see me jerk that's because it almost grabbed that bait and flung it um, that's what I'm talking about you want to be careful of that but you can see that we got the perfect roundness on this bait now it's perfect and it's centered okay <clears throat> now we need to work our way over to the sandpaper we want to get rid of some of these ridges I got when I was routing. Um, 
that's just part of it. So we'll go ahead and get this sanded. All right, guys, so sanding this bait, I'm just gonna take my sponge, go ahead and hit the back side, and I'll do a flat back on it. I'll do the flat part right now. I'm not worried about the curves at this point in time. I just wanna knock down any high ridges on this back side that's gonna be in my way. Okay, kinda see how that smoothed up there and now them ridges up there are gone. Now we can work the sandpaper on the edges and just like this. And it'll form to it since it's got that sponginess on there. Oh, I dropped it. Grab this. All right, so just go ahead and hit that. Okay, after we get this sanded, um, I'm either gonna foil this bait or I'm not. I'm probably not gonna foil this one. We'll do that in another video, but um, just lightly hit it. And now, wipe it off. This bait is ready. Uh, this bait's ready to be sealed, guys. Now, if you want to taper your tail down a little, you can. I'm not going to on this one. We're going to seal this bait up now. And all I'm going to use to do that is some sanding sealer. All right, guys. So I got my plug put on my stick here. This is my sealing stick. Um, it's on there. All I have here is a pickle jar that I put um, sanding sealer in. Just because I didn't want to have to pop open that cap every time. I can just turn it comes open just like so make sure you seal your bait good and I'm gonna let this sit in this for a couple of seconds to let it soak up that sanding sealer real good we are gonna be doing more than one coat of sanding sealer um, I recommend doing this three times but I'm not gonna show all three steps in this particular video um, so just do that and pull it out and we're gonna let them drip okay All right, guys, so I got my bait dipped in sanding sealer. I'm going to do a couple more coats, lightly sand it with some 300 grit or 320 grit sandpaper, and then we'll be back with you. Right, guys, so this guy is dry, and he's ready for us to start sanding him. So I'll pull him off there. You guys can check him out. He's nice and dry. And um, I'm just going to take our foam pad here and go ahead and sand him. Now, once I get done sanding this, I'm ready for my belly weight. Sand this dude and make it real smooth, real, real smooth. Just get rid of any of the high ridges, ridges you can feel. Feel him, and I'm happy with him. I got a little spot right here. That You see he's super 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 smooth and if you guys want to do another one if you guys want to dip them again if you want a nice like even smoother than that you can but i'm fine with that um now we're gonna mark center i'll show you how to drill my belly weight holes guys so i got them over here all i'm gonna do with this marker is do a line there flip them do a line there so now i can see where my center is and i want my belly weight to be about right here so I'm gonna put me a mark going this way and then dot right there now <clears throat> before I even take this over to the drill press and even attempt anything I'm gonna go ahead take a thumbtack I'm gonna make me a point and what this is gonna do is it'll keep that portion a bit in center there so it don't wander off and they normally don't but I do that for extra precaution so let's work our way over here to do a press. This guy in my jig, I'm gonna go ahead and drill his belly weight hole. I have a pre mark on that drill bit, you can see the depth I want him at. Pop it up. And um, I know not to go any deeper than that. There's our hole. Perfectly centered. And uh, let's go glue this plug in here. My belly weight 
has a hole in the center. Now, if you're wondering what this is, I actually got this idea off of Alvin Bowman. I'll put a link in his description below on how to make these guys. I do them a little differently than he does. I take a, I have a nail that actually fits in the center of these. I take them over to a sander and I just spin it like this with the sander on and it gives me my belly weight size that I need. Now you mix up some epoxy and pop this in here and let her dry. So we'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back with you. Guys, we got our belly weight in there. Now it's time to coat this whole thing in some um, epoxy. So let's go ahead and get this epoxy and put on the turner. Go ahead and go over the materials we're gonna need for this part. Um, I buy these acid brushes at a um, my local hardware store. Um, they're just acid brushes for like doing copper pipes and stuff. But you can buy them really cheap and I buy packs of them for $2. I like BSI, 30 minute slow cure for coating these. So let's go ahead and mix this up in here. Two equal parts, hardener and resin. Go ahead and mix this and uh, get this guy on the turner. So that's good. Go ahead and put your caps back on there. Go ahead and put this up here. Now I have these popsicle sticks I like to mix just because it don't contaminate my epoxy any. It don't have any dust or any of that on it. Um, so go ahead and just mix this up. I like to stir it like this. Once I get done, I'll come out on these outside edges and I'll kind of scrape them edges like that. I'll scrape the bottom real good. Make sure you get all that mixed up. If this ain't mixed up real good, then you won't have good set epoxy and your bait will just be sticky. And trust me, I've been there and done that and it is no fun. It sucks. You ruin an entire bait. So I pretty much know when this stuff is mixed pretty well because it's see how it's kind of thin now because it's activated both of them chemicals have combined and they are starting to do what they need to do to harden so let's go ahead and get this guy brushed now on these you don't want too much epoxy but you want enough where it's gonna coat that wood real good. This is the best way to really get a good seal on your bait and a good, nice, clean, flat, smooth painting surface. I don't know if any of you have tried painting just the bare wood, but it's super grainy. So if you try to paint that with all that grain, it um, just don't go too well. Now, the reason why I like to put some sanding sealer on these is because it allows for the epoxy to not soak into the wood and um, it will keep that from happening. Okay. So the epoxy won't soak into the wood and it'll actually be really smooth. So you can see we got a good coat on this. If you have any kind of air bubbles at all you can take a torch or you can take a heat gun to this i'm actually not seeing any air bubbles so i'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on the turner and i'll show you that all right guys so this here's my turner now i got holes in it i also got this idea off of alvin bowman he does some pretty neat stuff but uh i got all these baits up here that i'm currently working on that are drying we're gonna go ahead and let this one turn. And um, once he is fully turned and he's nice and dry, um, we'll get to painting them. Show you the next steps after that. After this step, we're gonna cut the lip slot in him. We're gonna paint him and put the lip in and get him cleared. Alrighty guys, I just pulled this guy off of the turner. As you guys can see, the epoxy is nice and clear. It ain't got no bubbles in it or nothing. And now what we want to do is go ahead and paint this guy up. So let's go ahead and get him off of this stick. What I like to do, sometimes your epoxy will be on the end of this stick and it'll dry up. So I'll take a little a blade here and I'll come in and I'll cut that. I'll just score like a solid line on the back there. 
And once I feel it pop, I know it's loose. I need a pair of pliers, but I'll use these to hold that, just to hold it so I can pull that guy. Okay, so there's our plug. And this guy is ready for some paint. So let's go ahead and get him on the paint booth, y'all. All right, guys, so we got the bait over here at the booth, and we're going to go ahead and get this guy coated in some white. It's opaque white. And um, we'll go from there. I got a little color scheme in my head. Um, I did a bait like this the other day, so this should work pretty well. I like a white background. You can paint these any color you want. You can do like a yellow, chartreuse, orange, red, really anything you want. My airbrush right now is set on a, heck, I can't even remember how many PSI it's running on. It's not a lot. These airbrushes don't need a whole lot of pressure to run. Okay, so I'm happy with that coating. That guy looks good. Make sure I get my tip a little better. I always forget the tips because they're way up there. So now he needs to dry, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this white cleaned out of my airbrush, and we'll go ahead and get the next color going. Next color we're spraying is a pearlized white. Okay, I'm gonna spray that all over the bait. These pearls really make these paints pop, guys. I really love pearlized colors. I think they look great. Okay, <clears throat> there's our pearl. We'll let this dry and we'll move on to the next colors. The next colors we're gonna be doing is actually gonna be on the back side here. So let me go ahead and get this brush clean and we'll do that. Okay, guys, so the next color we're gonna be doing is this fluorescent, okay, fluorescent yellow. I'm gonna be spraying it with this pattern. You can buy this pattern at Walmart in the craft section. So I'm just gonna spray this back side of this guy with this, just the very back. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna clean that out and we're gonna go over and load our brush up with the pearlized gold. Copper, I mean, pearlized copper. Okay, and we'll go from there. All right, I got a pearl copper loaded into the gun and we're gonna go ahead and spray some copper on this guy. We're gonna go right in front of where we just ended up last time. Just do a little spot of copper. Just like that, okay? Next color I'm gonna use, I'm gonna load the gun up with this neon red. This is made by Airbrush Colors US Art Supply. I really like their colors, their neon colors are really great. They have some really great colors. If you guys wanna go check them out, I'll put a link in the description below. No, I am not sponsored by them. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with this neon red, guys. You guys see how nice of a color that is? That'll really, really pop once we go to clear this guy. He'll really pop. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and load our brush up with a opaque black. Okay. This is made by Cretex. That makes some pretty good colors as well. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get that loaded up. Let's go ahead and get this black sprayed. I just wanna do the very tip of this guy. Go ahead and get this on there. Okay, and that looks great. I really like that. So now, 
we're gonna go ahead and I am uh, I actually decided that I kind of want some of this pattern on this very edge not too far on that edge just enough on that edge to where it kind of shows a little better so we'll go ahead and we'll get the same color sprayed so let's go ahead and do that all right let me go ahead and adjust this so I can actually get in there now I'm just barely barely gonna spray this stuff guys I'm sorry I just want to barely spray it. Okay, just like that. Go ahead and turn this guy and do the same on this side. I'm kind of getting out of the camera here. It's kind of hard to do it like this. Okay, just like that. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get all these coated and I'll be back with y'all. All right, guys, we got this guy coated all the way on the sides and everything. So now what I want to do is put a, a small black back on him. Um, so all I'm going to do is take my black. I'm going to put a small. Just a light bead. just like that okay the next color I'm gonna be loading in my airbrush is gonna be a pearl white let's go ahead and load that you don't have to do these exact colors you can do whatever color you want I just happen to like these colors let's go ahead and load this brush up with that and we'll do the next step now what we want to do is take the same pattern over that black back and I'm gonna hold this just I'm gonna go about right there and I'm just gonna hit it with that white We'll do a, like a mist. This got some black in it, so there we go. Slightly coat it like that, and we'll get that design. Now over top of this, I'm gonna take some of this pearl lime green, and we're gonna go over top of that with that same pattern, guys. The same exact pattern. our look where it's going for okay just like that now we're ready to put our side side stencil on um, the stencil we're going to be using for the sides is we're going to use one of these dots okay and we're also going to use what I call a half moon crescent moon I don't know what they what we call them we're going to use that okay and you can draw this out and then just cut it with an X-Acto knife. Um, so let me go ahead and get the colors put in for that. And we're going to be using this neon red for the for this. And then we're going to use the black for the dot. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and take this, this stencil here. And I'm going to set him. But that belly weight's right there, so I'm going to kind of, so I can... Have a good way to kind of line them up with the other side. We'll set him there. And we'll go ahead and get this sprayed on here. Okay. Pull it off. That looks great. I'm going to flip this and do the same on this side. So now what we're ready for is our black dot on this guy. So let's go ahead and do that. I decided to do this black dot a little differently today. Instead of using my stencil, because I know some guys just don't have round stencils or anything, I'm going to be using a drill bit. Um, this drill bit is a 11 64th. Um, you can use whatever size you prefer on whatever size. I'm going to be using 
some of this paint, pop the cap open. I'll go ahead and put a little bit down there. And I'm just going to dip my drill bit in it. And I'm going to do a test spot right here real quick just to see if that's, a, and that's about the size I want. So we'll go ahead and dab that. Let's go ahead and get this boy placed on here. Just like so. As you see, you can still achieve that dot with a drill bit. Now I'll work my way to the other side. I'll do that, kind of keep it in line. And we'll do the same dot. I always, and I don't know how I do it, but I always get this one lower, or one side lower than the other. But it's all right. I'm pretty good at these up here though. Those look pretty good. But it'll be fine. It'll still catch fish. Now the next step is to put our eyes on this guy. Let's go ahead and do our eyes. And I'm gonna put some yellow eyes on this guy with some black pupils. So let's get to it. I'll do my eyes the same way, except I'm gonna be using a bigger drill bit for the main part of my eye. I always like to dip my drill bit and then do a test, a test drip, just to see how big the pupils, the eyes gonna be. So all you can do now is kind of line this up dab that on there like that. I'm going to do the other side the same exact way. Just like so. And there's our eyes. Now we'll let this dry and we'll come along and we'll do our black pupils. But before I do that, I actually forgot to put the red belly on here. So let's go, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So guys, with this belly, I'm going to be spraying straight down at it. Don't come this way. Don't go upwards. I'm gonna spray straight down. So let's go ahead and spray this belly on here. Do light, just a real light. Kind of coating on, and that's it. So now we'll go ahead and let them eyes dry. We'll put the pupils on him. Then he'll be ready for a clear. Those dry. Now I'm going to take my black. Go ahead and dot that. It's too much, but I used the uh, that Apple Barrel craft paint for my eyes, just because it's a little thicker and it doesn't run as much as some of the others I've seen. So go ahead and dab that. And now we'll go ahead and get this eye put on here, just like so. These eyes really bring these baits to life, guys. Do the other side. Okay, so there's our eye on this guy. Now we're gonna let these eyes dry and I'll show you guys how to put a clear coat on this. I thought about doing some kind of silver glitter or something in this, but I'm not, not too sure if I will. I think I'll just, um, just clear it. This guy's really looking good, y'all. Guys, so the eyes are dry, and I'm to the point on this bait now to where I want to get the lip slot in here because I'm actually going to put the lip in and then clear it. So let me go ahead and throw this in here and um, cut this lip slot out of here. So there's our complete lip slot. So now we're gonna go ahead and go glue that in. We're gonna be putting a coffin bill lip on this, okay? And all I'm gonna be using is some five minute epoxy. So let me go ahead and get this mixed up. These are almost empty. So I gotta shake them real good to get the epoxy to come out. Now this five minute stuff, you don't have a lot of work time with it, so. 
be sure you do this kind of quick. Okay. This stuff's real thick. Okay. Let me go ahead and mix this up. As you can see, it don't take a whole lot to glue this lip in here. Okay. Now, what I like to do is I'll take my lip and get a little bit of this. And I'll put it just like so. Do that on both sides like that. Now we can take our bait. And put this guy in here. We want to make sure he's lined up. He appears to be lined up great. So once this is dry, I will actually um, get some clear on this guy. Guys, our lip is dry. Now we're ready to get this guy a coat of clear. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I've thought about putting some glitter in this, but I don't, I don't want to. I just want to do a standard, standard bait. If you want, go ahead and do it. You can pick whatever colors you want, but I'm not going to on this one. But there should be plenty. Let's go ahead and get that mixed. Whenever you're mixing this, scrape your bottom and scrape your sides really well so you don't have any resin or hardener that ain't combining right. Clean that off, mix it in. Now we're ready to get this coated. On these brushes, make sure you do this and pull them just so you don't have any surprises. <laughs> Those really suck. Some of them bristles wanna come out of there. We'll go ahead and get this coating on here. I like to do the back first. It's not too, too focused on the tip right now. Now we're gonna work on the front here. Get a little bit of this on there. And what I want to do is when I brush it, I'm going to come right here. Don't be afraid to get a little around there. This is going to seal up your lip really well. Do the bottom half. I'm 
look at this. Let's see if there's any dry spots really quick. All right. So as you guys can see, this bait is coated. He's cleared. He's sealed up around that lip there. It is ready to be put on the turner. So we're gonna put this on the turner and leave it for a little while. So I got everything here, I got everything set up. We're gonna go ahead and put our line ties in here. And real quick, what I need to do is get my hole back in there. There's actually a hole in here already. I'm take a thumbtack. Man, I'd epoxy some hard stuff. I just want to put like a dot. And that's my drill bit has a reference. I'm gonna go up here in the front where my center is. I'm also gonna make a dot for reference, just like so. In the back, we already have that. So now I take my drill bit, and go ahead and drill this out, make sure I ain't gonna drill through this, okay? There's one hole. Let's go ahead and do the front hole now. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this back just in case. All right. Now we've got all them drilled out. And they are now ready for our epoxy. All I'm going to do is mix up some five minute epoxy on the top of this. And we're going to take this popsicle stick to them. So, this is the part A resin. You don't need a lot, okay? And this is the Part B hardener. I don't know if you all have ever used this JB Weld stuff, but it stinks so bad. It's horrible. Let's go ahead and mix this. Mix it real good. And this stuff, since it's hotter in here, it's going to set up really quick. I don't have the AC on. My hand's a little sticky right now. So I'm going to pop one of these gloves on so I don't get anything on this bait. Because I'm telling you what. You can ruin a bait quick and fast. Sticky hands. So, go ahead. This is going to be the lower belly. Get him some epoxy on him. We're going to screw this guy in here. You guys see that epoxy right there? All you need for that is some Q-tips. Kind of clean up a little bit you don't want to completely get rid of all of it though just like that okay now we're gonna go ahead and do the rear hook hanger and that's this one Put your hook hanger. Go ahead, put this guy in. All 
when you screw this in like this it taking that epoxy in there with it which is a good thing screw this guy all the way in just like so take your q-tip clean off a little bit of access now this guy is ready for the front okay i just got my glove all sticky so i ain't even gonna worry about the glove now it's, uh, it's funny how that works anyway get our epoxy on this guy go ahead I can get him get him camera actually cut off on me there but all I did was glue that front hook hanger in now I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, hooks on here and he'll be ready to take out and test alrighty guys there he is we got the hooks on him and um, we're gonna go ahead and take him down to the pond and do a little swim test on him guys so that's going to be it for this video that's a wrap as you guys can see that pond swim test went real good um he swims really nice he's got a really nice wobble to him and um he's just an overall great bait looks really good um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope this has helped people that's wondering how i like to build my baits and help you to build baits as well um but hey guys as always like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one